Welcome back YouTube, this is my channel for an everyday life of an SB. If you're following me and you're new to my channel, I welcome you all. I'm SB. I'm all about creating mental health and awareness, sharing my life stories with suspicious syndrome, OCD and the like, as well as just doing some tips and tricks about how you can manage and cope with your everyday personal struggles, regardless if it's just your own versus your health or just personal be it financial or whatever it may be as a form of encouragement motivator whatever i am at this point of time so it has been brought to my attention obviously that i'm hoping to do and hopefully for the next week and a bit before i bring in the nizzy gritty just to tidy up some of the mental health and all these other areas that i want to share with you all right now and hopefully that we can learn and educate one another from what we can experience but just as a disclaimer tool as always also before I begin this to carry on as I'm no medical doctor I'm just your normal everyday Joe vlog so if you see anything out of the ordinary of these signs and symptoms that comes out of your mental health versus just the general health stuff that I'm bringing out regardless what it is seek professional help for yourself or your loved one and also seek you know second opinion sort of thing if something doesn't seem fit here as said I don't forever condone pretty much self harm. So it has been brought to my attention obviously in the first part it's all about strokes. What I covered is the three types of strokes, the definition of the strokes, what to look out for obviously of the signs and symptoms basically and the acronym FAST, F-A-S-T pretty much and when is the time to actually you know call an AMBO so to speak and also with those three types of strokes that I brought out I also brought out the definition of what they are and where it affects in the brain and whatnot as I said before also some of these bits and pieces will have some diagrams to easily follow through to understand more to what I'm saying especially in the first part so that you know the differentiation of these different strokes because you know we need to educate and learn from one another so this one's basically part two about all about the strokes what you need to know what is going to entail us the diagnostic test versus the treatments and you know what you can do to help prevent future strokes and whatnot because as we know like with anyone that has any kind of illness or whatever it may be in their everyday life we need to be well looked I've been obviously kick signs out because obviously it can be really daunting for the one that may be living with their everyday condition be it stroke be it diabetes and whatever else we just need to be there as of support for everyone not just for certain selective view obviously so let's begin this before I run out of time of all my jibber jibber and let's begin this okay diagnosis test obviously let's begin several different types out there for diagnosis tests that doctors can use in order to determine which type of stroke that has occurred in that brain part okay the first one is the ct scan of the brain ct scans of the brain are one of few ways to determine which type of stroke a person has had physical examination a doctor will ask about the patient's symptoms and medical history they may check their blood pressure, listen to the carotid arteries in the neck and examine the blood vessels at the back of the eyes or to check for any indications of clotting. Okay, blood tests. A doctor may perform blood tests in order to find out how quickly the patient's blood clots, the levels of particular substances including the blood clotting factors in the blood and whether or not the patient has got an infection. CT scan. CT scan is a series of x-rays that can show hemorrhages, strokes, tumours and other conditions within and inside out and around the brain. MRI scan. This is like radio waves and magnetic magnets that creates an image of the brain to detect damaged brain tissue. Carotid ultrasound. An ultrasound scan to check the blood flow of the carotid arteries and to see if there is any plaque present. Cerebral anagrams, dyes are injected the brain's blood vessels to make them visible under x-ray in order to give a very detailed view of the brain and the neck arteries. Echocardiogram, a detailed image of the heart is created to check for any sources of clots that could have travelled to the brain to cause the stroke in the first place. Treatments for stroke, as there are two main different kinds of strokes or even as I said before three but the main two that I clearly want to strongly say here is ischemic and hemorrhagic that are obviously caused by different factors both which will require different forms of treatment. It is not only important that the type of stroke is diagnosed quickly to you know reduce the damage done to the brain after the patient suffered from a stroke but also because treatment suitable for one kind of stroke can be harmful to someone who has had a different kind so we need to treat with care and obviously as always 
know the warning signs and symptoms as mentioned before. So within that ischemic stroke that I mentioned in birth, this is like caused by arteries being blocked or narrowed and so treatment focuses on restoring an adequate flow of blood to the brain. So treatment can be begin with drugs to break down the clots and prevent further ones from forming. Aspirins can be given as it can an injection of the tissue, plasminogen activator or TPA. TPA is a very effective it's very effective at dissolving clots but needs to be injected within four and a half hours of stroke symptoms that manifest in themselves. Carotid in the to in that to me surgeons are able to remove plaque and any other obstruction from the car carotid artery through surgery. Emergency procedures include administering TPA via the catheter directly into an artery in the brain or using a catheter to physically remove the clot from its obstructive position. Recent studies have cast out to the effectiveness of these methods however and so research is still ongoing as to how beneficial these procedures are. There are other procedures that can be carried out to decrease the risk of future strokes or TIIs. A carotid endectomy involves a surgeon opening the carotid artery and removing any plaque that might be blocking it. Alternatively, an angioplasty involves a surgeon unfolding a small balloon in a narrowed artery via catheter and then inserting a stent mesh tube into the artery in order to prevent the artery from narrowing again. Hemograph Hemorrhagic strokes are caused by bleeding into the brain and so treatment focuses on controlling the bleeding and reducing the pressure on the brain that is causing it. Treatment can begin with drugs being given to reduce the pressure in the brain. Overall blood pressure prevents seizures and prevents sudden constrictions of blood vessels. If the patient is taking anticoagulants or antiplatelet medications like warfarin or clopidogrel, they can be given drugs or blood transfusions to counter the medication's side effects. Surgery can be used to repair any problems with blood vessels that have led or could lead to hemorrhagic strokes. Surgeons can place small clamps at the base of aneurysms or fill them with a detachable coil to stop blood flow to them and prevent rupture. Surgery can also be used to remove small intravenous malformations Formations, AVMs, if they are not too big and not too deep within the brain. AVMs are tangled connections between arteries and veins that are weaker and burst more easily than other blood vessels. Normal blood vessels. Rehabilitation. Strokes are life changing events that can affect a person both physically and emotionally, temporarily or permanently. After strokes, successful recovery often involves specific rehabilitative activities such as speech therapy to help people with problems producing or understanding speech, practice relaxation and changing communication styles using gestures or different tones for example will help. Physical therapy to help a person relearn movement and coordination it is important to get out and about even if it is difficult at first. Occupational therapy to help a person to improve the, the ability to carry out routine daily activities such as bathing, cooking, dressing, eating, reading and writing, joining a support group to help with common mental health problems such as depression that can occur after a stroke. Many find it useful to share common experiences and exchange information either through social media sites or maybe just support groups in the local area where, where it's held. Support from friends and family. To provide practical support and comfort, letting friends and family know what can be done is, to help is very important. Preventing a stroke. Best way to prevent a stroke is to address the underlying causes. This is best done by living healthily, which means eating a healthy diet, maintaining a healthy weight, exercise regularly, not to smoke, avoid alcohol or just moderate consumption. Eating a healthy diet means plenty of fruits, veggies, whole grains, nuts, seeds and legumes. Eating little or no red or processed meat, limiting intake of cholesterol and saturated fat, typically found in foods of the original animal origin I should say and minimizing as much salt intake so as to support healthy blood pressure. Other measures taken to help reduce the risk of stroke include keeping blood pressure under control, managing diabetes while treating obstructive sleep apnea if that's present as well as any of these life channels changes a healthcare provider can help reduce the risk of future strokes through prescribing anticoagulant and antiplatelet medication. In addition to this that Tail surgery previously mentioned can also be used to lower the repeat strokes 
Well, that's basically Ian's the last pad of All About Strokes. Give me a like for thumbs up for supporting the game and comment below. Follow me through my social media sites. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Feel free to also turn on the notification bell so you know what I'm up to. Feel free to share these videos around to family and friends as I said because obviously this is important regardless of it all because I want to educate and whatever for you all so that we can understand each other. So without further ado guys, thanks for your support, thanks for what you do, I love love what you do. Until next time, as we're signing out and I'll see you all again soon.